Hello and welcome to the Outdoor Podcast. I'm Dave Thomas. Thank you so much for tuning in to this show. Before we get started, we want to say a special thanks to the companies who helped make this show possible. And those companies include Easton Archery, Gas Bowstrings, Burris, The Bow Hitch, Scott Archery, and Trophy Ridge. Also, special shout out to Deer Camp Coffee for keeping us caffeinated throughout the show and keeping us entertaining for you. The Outdoor Podcast was created and produced by BowHunterPlanet.com. If you ever want to learn archery, please check out BowHunterPlanet.com and you get a minute to learn the skills you need to become an archer or a bow hunter. Hey, and welcome to the Outdoor Podcast. I'm Dave Thomas. On today's show, we have a very special Burris edition of our story time with Corey Upper, who's going to tell you this really cool story. But before we do that, just a special thanks to Burris for sponsoring this video. Check them out online. They have optics for everything you can imagine from guns to crossbows to bows. Uh, they have range finding bow sights, which are a ton of fun. And if you haven't tried one, they're actually very helpful in the field. So check it out when you get a minute at BurrisOptics.com. All right, let's get to this story from Corey Upper. Today, I want to share with you the story of the buck I killed in Indiana this year. 136 inch 12 point, my biggest buck to date. And I got kind of a cool story to, that kind of goes along with it. So it all starts a couple years ago, actually many more years ago than that. Um, like back in, uh, I want to say like 2013, 14, somewhere in there, my dad, he, uh, went on an out-of-state bow hunting trip out to Wisconsin. While he was out there, he shot a 151-inch 14-point. Trophy buck of anyone's lifetime. Beautiful deer. Field dressed just an incredible, was like five and a half years old. Uh, something every bow hunter dreams of. And I was so happy for him that he was able to do that. And uh, at the time, he shot it with this bow right here. It's a Struther Rath SHO, like 30 inch ass axle bow, 60 pounds. Bow did a great job. So the story starts out a couple years ago. I'm down at my dad's visiting. I look up on the wall, the, the wall in the garage and what do I see is the Rath SHO there. And I asked my dad, I said, what are you gonna do with that bow? Cause I, I'm honestly, I don't think he's bow hunted since he shot that deer. I think it's one of those things like you climb Mount Everest or you win the champion, the world championship and you can't really do any better than that. And you kind of think, well, maybe I'm done. I don't know if that's the case or not, but I really don't think he's bow hunted since he shot that deer. So I asked him, I'm like, what are you gonna do with that bow? And he was like, mm, nothing. And I said, can I take it? Try and kill a deer with it? He was like, yeah, go for it, take it. So I was like, cool. We get to, you know, so honestly, I had it for a couple years, didn't use it, um, sighted it in in the backyard, you know, but when it would come to go, going out on a deer hunt, you know, I was working with Bow Hunter Planet, so I had a bow that I was going to use for them. Well, well, this year, I didn't have a bow. Um, so I was like, hmm, what should I use? So I went down in the basement and I've been kind of involved in the archery industry for many years. And let's just say I have a lot of bows. Uh, I think I've got eight or 10 bows hanging in the basement. And I looked up and I saw the old Rath SHO and I said, you know what? I'm gonna take that bow to Indiana this year and uh, see if my dad's luck will carry over for me. And <laughs> well, lo and behold, say, let's just say that it did. Um, and I was able to, to kill an incredible deer with this. But so, so let's kind of get into that part of the story. So every year we go for like the first week of November Generally, we leave anywhere from Halloween to like the fourth or fifth. We and we stay for eight. We hunt for eight days. We're gone for ten because uh, travel. It's about a nine-hour drive to get down there um, where we hunt. But so headed down this year was going to be warm. Going to be sixty to seventy degrees during the day. Um, like I don't even know if it got into the forties at night. So the deer weren't really moving and stuff like that. Our our friends that hunt down there with us. They, they were extending us trail camera pictures, which we really didn't have much of anything for trail camera pictures. So, I mean, but hey, it's the rut, so you never know what's gonna happen. So we get down there, we're not even really seeing any deer in the field. So it's the first day and go out in the morning, really nobody sees anything. Um, you know, we're texting each other during it, sat till 11 o'clock, 
all I saw was squirrels. So I, I was a little down thinking, man, it's going to be a long week. And uh, so went in for lunch, went back out about 3 o'clock, somewhere in there. Did a little bit of shooting at noon, just made sure everything was still on with my bow. Everything was dead on, stuff like that. So sit down and uh, probably about an hour before dark, I'm sitting there and I look up and I see antlers coming through the woods. Right straight across the cut, or a, a bean field, not a cut bean field, just a bean field straight across from me. Snap up with the binoculars. Yep, it's a nice eight point. Comes out, starts milling around on the edge of the field. Um, I don't know, he might have been 100 inches or something like that. Um, just not a deer that I would shoot down in Indiana. Michigan, I'd have shot, you know, Northeast Lower Michigan where I live, I, I would have shot him any day of the week. He was a trophy buck for up here, but not for down there. And lo and behold, he comes right across the field, right at me, sits down below me for 25 minutes eating. And uh, it, it was really cool to watch, got to see him do a lot of stuff. And, and uh, a friend of mine, was about 300 yards behind me, and uh, he hasn't done a lot of bow hunting, and the, bow, the deer came right down past me and headed right for him. And it would definitely be a good shooter for him as a first buck. So I was texting with him and kind of keeping an eye on this deer as it went away, and then it kind of went out of sight. And So I just kind of settled back in and kind of figured, well, that's the deer I was going to see for the night, and that was going to be over. Well, where I'm at, there's oak trees everywhere. It's, it's pretty much just straight oaks. And... That to that time of year, all the leaves are down, so it's just squirrel, 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 squirrel. I mean, constantly just crunching leaves everywhere. It, it's so annoying, <laughs> to, be, to be honest. You constantly think deer are coming. So I'm sitting there. It's about 10 to 15 minutes before dark, and I hear crunch, crunch, crunch in the weeds, and I'm like, mm, that doesn't sound like a squirrel. So I, I look back over my shoulder to my right, and all I can see is antlers coming through the woods. So I jump up, grab my binoculars, take a look at the deer, and lo and behold, it's a great buck. I, I, don't, I don't know how many points it has at this point. All I know is that it's a big deer, and I gotta figure out, he's probably about 80 yards away from me in the woods. So I start looking for my grunt call, and I got my, my uh, binocular case here. I got all this. <laughs> I can't find my grunt call. I'm practically panicking. But eventually I find it, bring it out, grunt at him. He stops, looks in my general direction, and then turns and comes right to me. I could, I, honestly, I was kind of in shock. And right below me, there's like a trail coming into the woods, like a tractor trail. So I look at, I, I see him coming. And I'm like, all right, he's gonna be he's gonna be on the tractor trail. So I pick up the Rath SHO, I come back to full draw, and he's coming right down the tractor trail at me. And I probably have him at about 20 yards, but he's quartering directly directly to me. And it's not a shot I want to take. So, and, and I don't want to injure a, a trophy deer like this. I, I have a whole week of hunting. There's no reason to take any kind of a risky shot like that. So. I'm like, just wait, just wait. I'm, I'm saying in my head, you, just wait, just wait. You don't have to shoot. So he comes in and he just keeps coming and he's perfectly broadside for me now at about 15, 16 yards, but there's a tree that comes out in front of me. The most advanced range finding bow sight is now even better. Introducing the Oracle 2 from Burris. Based on customer feedback, we improve the pin brightness control, refine the LRF adjustment system, and brighten the aiming ring. There's still no glass to scratch, fog, glare, or break, and the fail-safe 20-yard pin has your back no matter what. At the push of a button, you instantly get the yardage to target. Extend your ethical distance with the Oracle 2 from Burris. Burris. But Easton match grade shafts undergo a far more meticulous straightness check, with razor tolerance at both ends the center, and the critical quarter locations. Discover the ultimate in precision and made in USA quality. Visit your authorized Easton dealer and pick up your Easton Match Grade Pro Shop Series arrows today. Established in a small town in Kentucky in 1981, a company that produces quality products that archers have come to rely on. I started shooting with a Scott release and have passed the tradition on. 
As I've aged, the company I started with continues to innovate and produce the premium products it always has. My dad always told me, never forget where you came from. Well, <laughs> I haven't. Shoot with confidence. Shoot a Scott. For more than 20 years, Trophy Ridge has developed tools that bow hunters trust and continue to lead the way in bow hunting innovation. Our field proven products dish out dirt naps all over the world. We've manufactured and sold millions of products along the way, each one strategically designed to give you a distinct advantage in the field. From the backyard and competitive courses, to the backcountry and Midwest cornfields, our products remain lethal, accurate, and continue to help you react to the situation at hand. Trophy Ridge accessories give you confidence regardless of the situation. Our sights, rest, stabilizers, quivers, and releases set you up to be successful season after season. There are plenty of factors to think about on the hunt. Your gear shouldn't be one of them. We're Trophy Ridge, and we build the tools that bow hunters trust. We are outdoors people, um, boating, fishing, hunting, and we are coffee lovers. Um, my husband and I, we met at a coffee shop about 20 years back, so we've grown to love different blends, different beans, and different types of coffee. And throughout our time together, um, we decided that we wanted to create something for ourselves. So that's where this all came into play. And it's not just an outdoorsman, it's women, men, children, um, it's the community that come in here and they like it, they sit down at our cafe, they might have a venison hot dog, um, a cold brew coffee, and they enjoy their time here. And you can kind of see this in the video. And then the deer turns and he just starts walking, not quite right straight away from me, but, but slightly quartered away. And he, essentially he gets out, I had, I had uh, ranged the edge of the beans and I think that's about where he was when I shot him and at about 26 yards. So I laid right between my 20 and 30 yard pin, kind of right off that back rib where he was Man. because he was quartered away from me and I let one fly and the arrow hit and it was a, a, a blue nocturnal lit up like fire headed right to him 
and he, and he took off through the woods. And just like any other deer you shoot, your heart sinks, you know. And because I can see now, I can see about this much arrow sticking out of him. And I thought, oh man, what did I hit? Why didn't I get any penetration or anything like that? Well, it turns out what actually happened was I hit the off shoulder. So I absolutely cleaned his clock. Um, and so he, he ran away and he carried the arrow with him the whole time. So I could see the blue, the blue knock, you know, going down through the woods. And, and kind of some of the lower brush hadn't lost its leaves yet because I think because the wind hadn't, hadn't knocked him down yet. So eventually I lost the, the, the Luminoc and I couldn't, or the, the Nocturnal, I couldn't see him any, anymore. So, you know, that always freaks you out because you like to see him go down. So I'm listening, 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 and pretty soon I hear crash. And I'm like, that had to be him going down. But you just never know. He's right over on the edge of where I knew there was a big hill. And I thought, did he just go down the hill? And that was the last thing I heard. I couldn't hear him anymore. Or did he actually crash and, and go down? Well, it turns out that's where he went. But what, what freaked me out a little bit too was because I hit him so high, there was no blood. I'm not joking, guys. Not one drop of blood. The, the arrow went in just to the left of the spine on the top of him, hit that off shoulder, and he, he took off. We, we kind of looked for like 50, 60 yards trying to find blood, nothing. So it ended up just turning into a spread out and search. We, we headed off through the woods and in five minutes we found him. So it, it, was, it was one of those high low moments of every deer hunt, you know, where you're, you're, at first you're like, oh, I killed him. And then you're just not sure what you heard and stuff like that, where your mind starts playing tricks on you. When you know deep down in your heart, you made a good shot and the deer's dead. So, but what really made this deer special for me was shooting that deer with my dad's bow. So, you know, we, we all, you know, our dads teach us how to hunt and everything like that. And, you know, we get our first bow that maybe they buy us and something like that. And, and sometimes we even get a bow handed down to us, you know, that, that our dads might have given us and stuff like that. But that, that wasn't the case with this bow. But, but for me to take my dad's bow, the, deer, the, the bow that he shot the biggest buck of his life with, and then for me to take the same bow like 10 years later and shoot the biggest buck of my life to date is pretty cool. I think it's safe to say this bow will never leave our family, okay? I am gonna hand this down to my kids, share the story with them about how this is the bow that your grandpa killed 151 inch 14 point with, I killed 136 inch 12 point with, now it's your guys' turn to go out and see what kind of a deer you can kill with grandpa's SHO. So that's my story of my 2023 Indiana deer. It'll always have a special place in my heart because of the, the, the bow that I killed that deer with. So, hey, thanks for listening to my story. We'll catch you next time.